God is good all the time. Put a song. Good morning, church, and all our viewers. We hope you're all staying strong and staying inspired in the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are thankful to the Lord for the wonderful and anointed media service last week, especially the message by Reverend Joshua Asad Vicky entitled Be Strong in the Lord. Now let's remember the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. I am Brother Nigel, your presider for this week. Our theme from the Lord for 2024 is look up and see your salvation and promotions draw nigh. A year of great promotions for His glory, which is found in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Praise the Lord. May the good Lord continue to use us to be a blessing to many and even unto the nations of the world. Amen. Let us continue to be united in prayer for the gospel to reach all nations. Praise the Lord. Many thanks once again for all your earnest prayers and faithful support for our Digital Discipleship Church program. By the way, our presenters for this week are as of the following. Scripture reading will be done by Sister Sandra. Worship leading will be led by Brother Joshua Jamandron. Exhortation will be done by Sister Susan Anthony. Praise the Lord. Prayer for the Nations for Philippines will be led by Reverend Josephine de Villa representing FGCCI Philippines. The Word of God will be shared by Reverend Dr. Bernard Ong, an apostolic missionary to the nations. Closing and benediction will be conducted by Reverend Dr. David Kuei, Senior Pastor and Spiritual Overseer of FGCCI. Praise the Lord. Stay tuned, Church, and let's look forward to a great year together. Good morning, Church, and all our viewers. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Psalm, chapter 27, verse 1 to 8. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. May the Lord bless the reading of His word. Stay tuned, church, and God bless. God is good. God is good. good morning, church, and all of our viewers. Here's a song entitled, For Your Name is Holy. Please join us.
I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. of my exhortation today is find rest in the Lord. Rest is important to your spiritual health. God created rest for our benefit to restore us. We can experience true rest when we spend time in God's presence, praying or reflecting on his word. 
as we take time from our busy schedule, we can be still, silent, present and allow Him to work in us. That is what God wants us to do, to rest in Him, to let go of our burdens and to let Him carry them. Rest is trust. Rest equals peace. Rest means quieting all our racing thoughts, worries and concerns and turning them over to God, like a baby resting in his father's arms. Scripture tells us in Matthew 11:28, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We all need to rest, to recharge and to be effective. If we don't rest, we will experience burnout. Many times we, we will come to God in prayer and turn over our burdens. But when we resume our worldly duties, we pick up those burdens again. We don't leave them behind. In the book of Psalms, we discover what resting in God truly means. The psalmist shows us steps we can take to find the type of rest that restores our souls restores our soul sorry let us remember the areas that we need to find rest with god call to him during sleepless nights psalms 4 answer me when i call to you my righteous god give me relief from my distress have mercy on me and hear my prayer how long will you people turn my glory into shame how long will you love delusions and seek false god Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. We should also trust God with our future. Psalm 16, 1-2, to 7-11 Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. <clears throat> I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make me known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Let us remember the areas that we need to find rest with God. Call to Him during sleepless nights. Psalms 4 Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false God? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make, my, make me dwell in safety. We also have to find rest with our future. Trust God with your future. Psalm 16, 1-2, 7-11. Keep me safe, my God, for, you, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. 
I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make me known to me in the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, Lord, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Amen. We need to rest with the Lord and allow Him to lead us. Psalms 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I like nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, Lord, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Psalms 127, the Lord tells us to give all our worries to Him. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labors in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. We must continue to trust in the Lord and rest in Him. Quiet your soul before God. Psalms 131 My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me but I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. The next time that you are exhausted and fall into bed for your night's sleep, be mindful of that feeling of complete surrender and trust. Savor the beauty of being still and enjoying that blissful state of rest, rest in the Lord. Then take that feeling of surrendering your burden to your waking state. There you will consistently understand what it means to rest in the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. In Psalms 46.10, a passage in which the psalmist declared that no matter what was happening around him, God was his refuge and strength, safe in the assurance that he is God and we can wait on him even amid chaos. This is God's promise and God's assurance to us. Be blessed, Church. Amen. God is good all the time. Praise God. A blessed day to all of you. And once again, I'm back here in this mass media program to pray for the Philippines, our nation. So I would like to extend my greetings to all the viewers and to all the members of FGCCI uh, Church. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord. We worship you and we exalt your name. For your word says, call unto me and I will answer you and show the great and mightiest things that are known. Lord, I lift up Philippines in your name, O Father, because I know that Jesus is reigning in our nation, O God. I pray, God, for the economic condition of the Philippines, the economic inflation. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, that you restore our economic condition with the farmers, O God. They grow, uh, they grow agricultural crops, O Father, that it will be, it will be used, O Lord God, mightily, Father, to saturate the blessings in all in our 
nation, O Father. I pray for all the Filipino people that you will patronize our, our own product, O God. And I pray also, Father, that you are going to establish, O Father, the works of the hands of the people, O Lord. I pray for the businesses in our nation, O Father, that the blessings of the Lord will abound to them, O Father, that there will, there will be abundance in, in their incomes, O Father. I pray for our President, Lord, in His leadership of our nation, O Father. I pray for wisdom and I pray for your divine protection upon our, our President, Lord, that He will be able to rule our nation in a godly way, O Father. I pray for those people that are uh, against our president. I pray for your mercy upon them, that our president will be able to find favor in all the constituents in our nation, O Father. I pray for the military people, O Lord God, that, Lord, you will serve their duty, O God, as a defender of our, of our nation, O Father. Even the, the problem in the Philippine Sea, so Father, I pray God that you, you, will, you will go ahead in this situation, oh Father, because I know that there is nothing impossible to God, to them that believe in oh God. We believe that you are the trouble shooter, oh Father. You, we, we believe that you will arrange everything, oh God, for, for the favor of our nation. I pray also, O oh Lord God, the typhoons, O oh Father, that are attacking our nation. I beg your mercy, especially in Manila, O oh God, that the flood, the areas are flooding, O oh Lord God, in different parts of our nation because of the continuous typhoon arising, O oh Lord. I beg your mercy, O oh God, that you will stretch out your hands, O oh Father, and help thy people, O oh Lord, especially those who have landsliding in their areas, so Father, that their house are being covered by the, the mud, so Father. Have mercy upon them, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray also, O oh Father, that the insurgency in our nation that are arising, O oh Father, that Jesus is of, uh, taking control of the situation, O oh God. In Zechariah 4.6, it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord of us. Lord, I pray, God, that your words will be saturated in the whole Philippines, O oh Father, that the, the evangelism, O oh Lord God, will continue to move, O oh Lord, without any hindrances to expose the goodness of God in their lives, O oh Father, that the believers will arise, O oh God, truly indeed the harvest as are plentiful, O oh God, but the harvester, the laborer are few. And I pray that you have you will be merciful upon our nation, O oh Lord God, even to our 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 areas, O oh Lord, being affected by the dengue fever, that there is epidemic in their place, O oh Father. I pray, God, you will be, you will take control in this situation, O oh God. It's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord of us. And this one is sick with fever, with dengue fever. I find it, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. And I pray that your hands is not your dear Lord, to touch everyone, O oh God, to bring healing to their bodies in Jesus' name. I pray for your provision for their medicine, so Lord God. And I pray also, Lord God, for all the children in school, so Father, that your protection will be upon them, O oh Lord. That you will charge your angels and seraphim and the blood of Jesus Christ will protect them, that they will not be affected by any sickness and infirmities arises, O oh God, due to this typhoon, due to the flooding situation, O oh Father. Lord, have mercy upon our nation, O oh Father. And I speak blessings after blessings will be upon our nation, O oh Lord God, because you promise that whosoever shall fall upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Save our nation, O Lord God, and forgive us, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, because you said in your words, if my people will call by my name and ask forgiveness, you will heal our land, O oh Father. I beg your mercy to heal our land, O oh God, especially in our economic 
foundation, especially the spirit of poverty is upon your people, O oh God. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. And I replace spirit of abundance, O oh God. Spirit of blessings and abundance will flood in the midst of your people, O oh Lord God, in our nation. Lord, I pray for the educational uh, sector, O oh Lord God, that our, our leaders, O oh Father, will study more, O oh God, to uplift our educational system in our nation, O oh Father. I pray for the economic condition in our nation, Lord, that everything will arise, O oh Father, everything will soar, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, that you never leave us nor forsake us. I speak blessings blessings upon our nation, O oh Lord God. I speak blessings upon all the leaders in our nation, O oh Father, and those, O oh Lord God, who need justice, justice will prevail to them, O oh Lord, and those who need blessings will be blessed in the name of Jesus, and those who need protection, Lord, may your protection, O oh God, the blood of Jesus Christ will protect every constituents in our nation, O oh Father, and I pray, O oh Lord God, May oh Lord you will you will go ahead of everything, O oh Father. Thank you so much, O oh Lord. Bless our OFW God that in different places, O oh Father, that they will be they will be a strength and good health upon them and they can find their favor of their employers, O oh Father, especially the Filipina a Filipino people in Malaysia, O oh Father, that they will be able to find favor in their employer, O oh God. Lord, strength and good health will be given to them, Lord, in all the nations of the world that there are Filipinos, O oh God, working abroad, O oh Father. Have mercy upon them and bless their families, O oh Father. I thank you, Lord God, that we have this opportunity to pray for our nation in Malaysia, O oh God. Lord, have mercy, and I thank you, O God. Bless the Philippines, O Father. Bless us together, especially the, the ministers of the gospel, O Lord, that you will bless them, O Father, that you will continue to pray for our nation, O Lord God, because of the prayer of village much of God. Thank you for everything. Bless this uh, mass media production, O Lord God. Bless the administrators and all the people that are working in this in this institution, O Father, in this mass media ministry, with the blessings of abundance will be upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask and pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, and I wish you a lovely Sunday worship. This morning, I thank your pastor, Reverend David Coy, for giving me this privilege to share with you the Word of God. This morning, I would like to share with you from the epistle to the Philippians, uh, chapter 4, verses 14 to 19. That is, Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 to 19. Here Paul say, Nevertheless, you have done well, that you share in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruits that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Apoproditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. 
Here in this portion of scripture, the Apostle Paul expresses his thanksgiving to the church in Philippi. And in his thanksgiving to the church, we can truly learn about the true meaning of giving. And so this morning, I would like to share with you the actual meaning of giving and i hope it will inspire you to give more unto the lord to give more to his church to give more for the extension of god's kingdom to give to help the poor and the needy to give to help those who are greatly involved in the extension of the kingdom of God. And so let us now learn about the true meanings of giving. First of all, let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Philippians 4, 14 to 16, the apostle Paul say, Nevertheless, you have done well that you share in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica you send eight once and again for my necessity. Herein is the true meaning of giving. And the first meaning is giving expresses our fellowship with the recipient. In other words, when we give to someone, we are expressing our fellowship with that individual. So when we give to God, we are expressing our fellowship with God. And when we give to a missionary, we are expressing our fellowship with the missionary. And when we give to the poor and the needy, we are expressing our fellowship with the poor and needy. And when we visit the orphan and the widow in their needs, in other words, we help them in their need, we are expressing our fellowship with all these poor and needy people. Now you will remember in Acts chapter 2 and verse 44, the word of God say, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Now according to this scripture, Acts chapter 2 verse 42, the early believers, all the early Christians, continuously devoted themselves to fellowship. The word for fellowship in Greek is koinonia. And this word koinonia means to have in common or to share. As those who are united with Christ, we are to share the life of Christ with one another in a way that results in individual and corporate spiritual growth. Because we belong to Christ, we are a family with those who are Christian. And as a family, we always have things in common. We have our times in common. We have our resources 
in common. And whenever someone is in need, we share. And that is the true meaning of koinonia. So koinonia means to have in common and to share. Therefore, as Christian, we ought to share. Yes, we give to God for the work of God on this earth. We give our tithes and our offering in order to meet the need of the church, which conceive of all brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord Jesus asked, Who is my family? He said, All of you are my mother, my father, my brothers and sister, everyone who is in the Lord is our family, and as such, we must have fellowship with them, and we must practice koinonia. We must learn to understand whatever we have, we have it in common, and we share with one another. That was what happened in the early church. Those who are able and they have extra houses, they sell their home, they sell their land, they give their property, they give their extra money to the church so that the brothers and sisters in the church would have their needs met. And in those times, when the people become Christian, they face a lot of persecution. And many of them were out of job because the Jewish people who practice Judaism would have nothing to do with this so-called uh, Christian. And so they would cut them off. And because of that, Christian family were in need. And that is where the church come in. But how can the church help unless brothers and sisters of the church practice this wonderful ministry of koinonia? We are expressing our fellowship with the recipient when we bless them with our time, with our resources, with our clothing, with our food with our finances. So, firstly, giving is an affirmation to the recipient that in Christ we have all things in common. And so, we share with one another freely and joyfully for God's kingdom and glory. Now, James 1.27 say, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself uns unspotted from the world. So we should care for those who are in need. And our giving is an expression of our fellowship with those people who are in need. We are telling them we are all fellow human beings. We are all created by the Lord. And we are Christian. And as Christian, we share freely with one another. And notice that when we express you know, our fellowship with all these people in need, or church in need, or missionary in need, or often, often and widows in need, all the poor and needy beggars who really couldn't work, but they could only beg. We are actually showing our, our pity to them. And God's word in Proverbs 19.7 say, He 
who has pity on the poor lands to the Lord, and the Lord will repay back what he has given. Praise be to God. Amen. Romans 12, 10 to 13 say, We are to be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, and notice, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. So this is a good reason why you and I must learn to give cheerfully for God love a cheerful giver. After all, our God is a very loving God, and He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So from the example of God the Father and our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, we must learn to give to help the poor and the needy. And we must give unto the work of God. And we must give to help our brethren who are in need. And likewise, the orphan and the widows and those who are poor and needy. And may God bless you always. Secondly, Philippians chapter 4, verse 17, Paul say, Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruits that abounds to your account. Here we learn that the second meaning of giving is, giving brings fruits to the giver. Paul here clarifies his thanks for the gifts of the Philippians. The focus of his gratitude was not merely the money itself, but rather the blessing upon the Philippians for their generosity. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, Paul say, those who sow or those who give bountifully will also reap or receive bountifully. This does not mean that believers should give in order to get more from God, but that God is pleased when His people give toward His work and toward his people, and to work those who are in need. So the divine accountant will keep good records of our account. Our giving brings spiritual fruits to the life of us, the cheerful giver. So your giving and my giving will bring fruits to you and to me because our God is a giving God. And when our hands are always open, we can receive from God and we learn to open and bless the church of God, the work of God, the orphan and the widow the poor and the needy and the pastor and the fellow minister who does the work of God, God will bless us more so that 
we will be able to continue to learn to be a good giver like God. So our giving is like we are putting our finances in our heavenly account. Not only God will bless us to enable us to continue to give, but God will bless us spiritually. Most of all, our character will change for good. We will continue to enlarge our heart, and we will continue to be filled more with the love of God so that we can lovingly give someone who is in need. Now, Paul speaks in such a way as if that whenever we give for God's work, we give to the poor and needy, we give for the extension of God's kingdom, we give to, to the recipient. Our account is credited. And of course, when we think of the bank account, interest will be plowed into our account. But more than the physical or the financial blessing, Paul is talking about our spiritual blessing and our spiritual well-being and our spiritual growth and development as we learn to give. So let us give cheerfully as unto the Lord. Acts 20 verse 35 say, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. What did the Lord Jesus say? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Many people could not understand why is it more blessed to give than to receive. Logically, the people of the world only reckon that you know, we are blessed when we receive, when we give, when we add on to our account. But Paul but here the Lord Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Why? Well, in my own humble understanding, first and foremost, giving in itself is a blessed act. You must have, or else you cannot give. So when you give, it shows that you are already blessed by God. You are so blessed, and that's why you are able to give. Those who are not able to give, one of the reasons is they are not blessed. And of course, there are other reasons that you know. So giving in itself is a blessed action. Secondly, every giver gives out of the abundance of their heart, out of their own blessed account, out of their own blessed abundance. They have and they give. If they don't have, they cannot give. And thirdly, giving meets the needs of the recipient. So it's a blessing to be a blessing to someone in need. And the re recipient of our blessing is blessed. Their needs is being met. And they are very thankful to God. And they are very grateful to the Lord. And of course, they remember you. And they pray for you. And you are being prayed for. And you are being blessed. And fourthly, giving may also cause the recipient to learn to give to others so that all our giving become blessing. Yes, blessing for the kingdom of God, blessing for us, 
blessing for the recipient and blessing from other who receive from the recipient of our loving gift. Thirdly, Philippians chapter 4 verse 18, Paul say, Indeed, I have all and I abound. I am full. I have received from appropriate the things sent from you. And here, Paul described those things that he has received from the Philippian church. A sweet smelling aroma. Mm. It's like perfume. It is wonderful. An acceptable sacrifice. Well pleasing to God. So you see, here Paul is saying that the giving of the Philippians are like a sweet smelling aroma. It is an acceptable sacrifice and it is pleasing unto the Lord. So the third reason or the third meaning of giving is giving produces fragrance that pleases God. Every time you and I give to someone or for the work of God or for those who are in need, it is like fragrance, like perfume that rises up to the nostrils of God as if God has no street. In other words, God is very pleased. God is so happy, overjoyed, when we are a giver. Whenever we give, it causes a smile to come upon the face of the Lord. Whenever we give, it is like perfume that rises to the nostril of God. So here, Paul uses a metaphor to describe the Philippians' financial, uh, uh, to describe the old, or rather, Paul uses a metaphor to describe the Philippian financial gift as a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to God. Now, notice that this imaginary is drawn from the Old Testament sacrificial system in which offerings were presented to God as a symbol of their worship and of their thanksgiving to the Lord God Almighty. So the animals are being slaughtered and they are being put on the altar and it burned and the smoke rises and they are like aroma and like perfume that goes to the nostril of God. They are like fragrance that rises to heaven and it pleases God. So by using this language, Paul is emphasizing the spiritual significance of the Philippians' gift, depicting it as a pleasing and acceptable sacrifice to God. Every time you give, whether to your church, whether to your minister, whether to the poor and needy, whether to the orphan and widow, or whether to a missionary or to someone who are serving the Lord or someone that you love and you care, your giving rises to God like an, a sweet-smelling aroma, like a fragrance, like a perfume to the nostril of God. And God smiles. 
and God is so joyful that His children are learning to give like He has given so much to us. So giving is a pleasing and acceptable sacrifice to God. So may you learn to give unto the Lord and to those who are in need. Amen. Fourthly, Philippians 4, 19 say, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Not according to Maybank, but according to his riches in glory. Not according to Bank Nagara, but according to the riches of his glory. So the fourth reason or the fourth meaning of giving is that giving ensures the faithfulness of God. Giving guarantee the faithfulness of God. Every time you give, every time you open your hand, open your palm and give to someone, whether in terms of your time or your effort or your finances or resources, you are opening your palm and your hand and God will be faithful to rain down His blessing. He will open His window of heaven and He will continue to pour for this blessing so that you can continue to give with open hands to those in need. Yes, giving affirms the recipient that in Christ we have in common and so we share. Giving adds spiritual fruits to the life of the giver. Giving acts as a pleasing and acceptable sacrifice to God. And giving assures the giver of the faithfulness of God. And herein is God's promise to supply all those who have learned to give unto the Lord, unto fellow ministers, unto the poor and needy, unto the orphans and the widow, unto your loved ones, your family members. And this is the promise according to Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So, my God reminds us of the source. God is the source of all our blessing. Shall supply speak about the certainty of God's supply. All my needs speak of the fullness of God's supply. According to His riches, speak of the measure of God's supply. In glory, speak of the storehouse of God's supply. By Christ Jesus, speak of the medium of the supply. It is in Christ Jesus, the greatest givers of all, for no one will give his life, but Jesus loved us, and he gave his all for our salvation. And so it is in Christ Jesus that God will continue to bless us and supply us as we continue to learn to give for the glory of the Lord. So why is it such a blessing to give? Well, giving obeys God's command. 
Giving submits to God's lordship. Giving exhibits God's heart. Giving illustrates God's salvation. Giving trusts God's provision. Giving widen God's smile. Giving advances the kingdom of God. Giving foster God's sanctification. Giving testify to God's power. Giving praises God's character. That is why the Lord has spoken in Acts 20 verse 35. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hearing is the true meaning of giving and why it is more blessed for you and for me to give. And I pray you will continue to give and give more and more generously unto the Lord for the church for the work of God, for fellow ministers who are serving God faithfully so that they can continue to serve the Lord. Help the poor and needy. Remember your brothers and sisters in your church who have need. Be a blessing because it is more blessed to give than to receive. And may God bless you until we meet again, see you again in the near future. God love you, and we love you in the name of the Lord. Bye-bye, and God bless you. See you again. Good morning, church and all the viewers. Thank you once again for tuning in to FGCCI in the channel, and I hope that you are richly blessed. But this week's me the service and I also hope that you are staying strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to take this time to thank all the presenters for the wonderful efforts, especially our dear brother Nigel for his excellent presiding, and also Sister Sandra for her excellent scripture reading. I also want to especially thank Brother Josh, Joshua Jamandron and Sister Kim for leading us into a wonderful time of worship in God's presence. I also want to especially thank Sister Susan Anthony for giving us such a wonderful and inspiring exhortation entitled Finding Rest in God. Truly, our rest comes when we find, our true rest comes when we find our rest in God. Hallelujah. I also want to especially thank Reverend Josephine Devella for leading us to pray for the nation of Philippines. Let us continue to pray for economic revival and also spiritual revival in the nation of Philippines. Hallelujah. I want to especially thank our speaker this week, none other than Reverend Dr. Bernard Ong, for a wonderful and powerful message, a blessed message to us, entitled The True Meaning of giving and we are also blessed by the many points and the many benefits of giving that he has shared to us and the true meaning of giving as he has explained and expound to us and in summary i just want to read from romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you may present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Even as we give our time, even as we give our skills, and even as we give our resources and finances, to the Lord. In all this, it can be summarized as giving our life to God. I think there's nothing more important 
and nothing more pleasing to God than for us to give our life to God in doing His will. The Bible say in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. So let us be encouraged and let us make that desire or that intention or that purpose upon our hearts to give our life to God to do His will. And I think there's nothing pleases God more than we give our life to Him in doing His will. Hallelujah. Especially during this time, this end time season that we are living in before the coming of the Lord. Let us, let us together to give our life to the Lord in doing His will. By giving our time, by giving our finances, giving our gifts and skills, and even giving our strength unto the Lord to serve Him in doing His will till the day of His coming. Praise the Lord. I hope that this short summary will richly encourage your heart to give your life to the Lord in doing His will. And, and always remember the true meaning of giving as has been shared to us so powerfully by Reverend Dr. Bernard Ong. Hallelujah. As as usual, we're going to give our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, even as we lift, lift up all these tithes and these offerings and this love gift before thy eternal of grace, bless Lord this giving for the advancement of the kingdom and for the glory of your name. That the gospel of the kingdom may be preached in every nation till the day of thy coming. Return back, Lord, your blessing upon every giver, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. And only so, Father, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, church, and other viewers once again for tuning in to FGCCI Media Channel. And before we conclude this week's media service, I'd like to give you a benediction. Just close our eyes and hearken to the benediction for this week. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. May the Lord stretch of His hands a favor and a blessing and a providence and a protection upon you, upon your family, and upon your loved ones. May we give our life unto the Lord in doing His will till the day of His coming. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, church, and all our viewers once again for tuning in to FDCCI Media Channel. Let us continue to stay strong and stay inspired in the Lord together. Jesus.